Welcome to the Trigger Editor Guide. This tutorial is divided into three parts. Hello World, Basic Triggers, and Reusable Functions. In this guide, we'll walk through creating the basis for a survival custom game. Before we do that, however, we need to unlock the Trigger Editor. So go ahead and jump into the Stormia Editor. You can accept the license if you have not already. And then if you look in the top left, you will see a Yeti. If you hold control and left click it 10 times, this will unlock the data trigger and ability editor. And then we can go ahead and close out that map and make a new one. You can pick whatever settings you'd like. And now you can see in the top left that we have our triggers, data and ability editors. We can press save in order to name our map I'll call this one Survival. First navigate over to the Triggers tab here on the top left. If it's blank like this, you can close it and just reopen it by pressing Triggers again. Right click on Survival and select New Trigger. We can call this Hello World. Left click on Hello World. You can see we have local variables, events, conditions, and actions. Variables and conditions I will go over later in the video but let's first talk about events. Events are what cause our trigger to run while in game. Right click on events and select new. Here you can see all the possible ways we can have a trigger run. For example, we can have the trigger fire when the game starts or a map is initialized. For our game, let's select timer and time elapsed. Press okay in the bottom right. We can then select this new line that we've added, elapsed game time is 10 seconds, and then double click duration. Change the value to 1 and press OK. Next, we will create the actual print message by right clicking on Actions and selecting New. Scroll down to UI and select Send Chat Message to Player Group. Alternatively, you can type in Send here to search for the action. You can now see that the editor is flagging something wrong with our action. Click on the red symbol on the right to find out what's wrong. In this case, we have not yet set our message. Click on the action, double click on message, set the source to function, and then select convert to text. Then double click value, change the type to string, and type in hello world. Press test map on the top of the screen to test your new trigger. I highly recommend making small changes and testing often to ensure your map still builds properly and your changes do what you intended. Now you have the ability to send messages in game. You can use this to talk to your players or even use it to print debug messages. Small efficiency tip, I recommend not logging into Steam to open the editor and instead suggest pressing the pen icon here. This will give the option to load the most recently opened map. Next, we'll create the basic enemy spawning functionality for our survival custom game. Let's start by adding Amara. Click on the Entities tab, and under the Vanguard section, we can add this Amara. Go back to Triggers. We can delete or disable these triggers. Create a new trigger called Spawn Enemies. Our event here will be timer periodic event. Note that this is different from the time elapsed event that we used in our hello world trigger. Change the duration to three. Add a new action and select unit, create units. Set the count to two. Change the unit to spawn by double clicking on type and typing in fiend. Change the player to two. For the position, we're gonna to have to navigate back to the terrain tab. Go to all entities in this dropdown here and type in world point. Select one and place it in the world. Press escape to stop placing world points. Select that point and change its place name 
to Spawn Point. Navigate back to the Triggers tab and double click on Position. Select Function as the source, then Actor, Actor Position. Double click on Actor Event Triggering Unit. Select Point, Point from Name. Double click Name and type Spawn Point. Note the capitalization. We can go ahead and press Test Map to test our changes. I'm all prepped. We are now successfully spawning enemy have. fiends, however they do not automatically seek out our hero. Let's fix that. Go back to our spawn enemies trigger and add a new action. Select Unigroup Issue Order Targeting Entity. Note that the unit category has an equivalent action, however, this will only issue orders to a single unit. Set unit group to last created units. Set the target entity to units, unit with place name. Go back to terrain and set Amara's place name to hero. Go back to triggers and set the name to hero. Press test. Give me the rundown. Now we can see fiends seeking out our hero. Making a beeline. Their history. Let's also add a new trigger for our loss condition. Let's add an event. Unit, unit dies. In this case, we'll be running our trigger when any unit dies because we're going to be adding a condition. Conditions determine if the actions should actually execute when the event happens. Right click on conditions and select new. Let's select logic and comparison. By default, this checks that the owning player of the triggering unit is player one. In this case, the triggering unit is the unit that died. Add an action, game, and game for player. Change outcome to defeat, and press test. Now when our hero dies, we lose the game. Let's say we want to spawn multiple different unit types, not just fiends, maybe brutes and magmadons, and then also order them to all attack our hero. That would require copying and pasting this for however many times you want to have different units. And if we ever want to change the attack move action, we would have to change every single one of these actions. Instead, what we can do is create a reusable function. For those who aren't so familiar with programming, a function is a way to both organize code and not repeat ourselves. To illustrate, I'm going to write some pseudocode for what we're trying to recreate in Stormgate. Let's call our function spawn enemy and order to attack. In the parentheses here, I'm going to write a unit type. And this is just to show that our function can take fiend or brute, for example, as an input variable to our function. In general, variables can be anything from you know, numbers to words or even unit types, uh, like what we're doing for our function here. So currently our Stormgate trigger does two things. It creates units and it issues an attack order we would want to pass in our unit type variable into the create units action. And from there, we can then use our function to spawn and issue the attack order to some fiends, 
or uh, brutes or any other units that you want, like mag, madons. In Stormgate, we can do this with global variables and triggers. Start by creating a new trigger. called spawn enemy and order to attack. From there we can cut these two actions and paste them back into our new trigger. Next, right click survival in order to create a variable. Let's name it IV for input variable, then spawn enemy and order to attack for the function name and then unit type for the actual variable name. You can name this global variable however you'd like. However, this is just a convention that I use. Click the variable and set the type to snow facts type. Set snow facts to unit data. Unit data and unit type are used interchangeably. Click back into spawn enemy and order to attack. And in the create unit action, click into type, change the source to variable, and select our newly created global variable. The difference between global variables and local variables is that global variables can be used in any of the triggers. Local variables can only be used by the trigger that it is within. Go to Spawn Enemies and add a new action. General Variables, Set Variable. Set the variable to our global variable and the value to Fiend. Add one more action Trigger, run. Change the trigger to spawn enemy and order to attack. Copy and paste these two actions. And change the second fiend to brute. Press test to see it all in action. Give me the rundown. I will make them pay. That concludes our trigger editor tutorial. This map will be available for download at the GitHub repository linked in the description. Thank you for watching.